Tales, Episode 97, Party Pooper and the Spirits of Golubak Fortress. Party Pooper was a helpful little one. And if in the mood, he knew how to bring the fun. He would prance about in his pointed hat and was always up for a friendly chat. But there were times when he was just too much and he could ruin a party and such. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there was a cooperative young goop boy named Party Pooper. He wasn't the life of the party, but he was a great helper. Party Pooper loved to be of service when he could. He sought out opportunities to help others. When it snowed, he always offered to help clear the sidewalks of all his goop friends. Pie Jam and Sweet Toothia were the first two goops that he called on because he knew they would have some sort of sweet treat on hand after he shoveled their sidewalks. During the fall season, when the sidewalks were full of leaves, Party Pooper would pull out his rake and go up and down the entire street, raking up all the leaves. The Goops, who lived on his street, loved this because they knew they could slide out of that chore. Party Pooper was much loved by Miss Wigglebutt because he always volunteered to stay after class and clean all the chalkboards and straighten the desks. Why, Party Pooper, I have to say, you are one of the most helpful goops, said Miss Wigglebutt after Party Pooper cleaned her classroom and set it up for the next day. Party Pooper just smiled back at her and said, I know. He prided himself on taking care of others. The strange thing about Party Pooper was that when it came to parties, in particular surprise parties, he was just a big Party Pooper and he would spoil them. There was something about parties that made Party Pooper anxious so he would try and sabotage them without even realizing it. There was a time when Touch'em and Take'em had set up a very nice surprise party for Won'ty and Why Naughty. Twins loved to celebrate twins. On the day of the party, all of the goops hid inside waiting for Won'ty and Why Naughty to walk through the front door so they could pop out and say, surprise! Everyone was crouched down behind the furniture, full of excitement, as they heard Wonty and Wynati walking up the street. Anticipation was in the air. And then, before anyone could stop him, Party Pooper ran to the front door, opened it, and tooted his little party horn and said, It's a surprise party, and everyone is inside waiting for you. Won't he? And why not he? Just looked at each other and said, Wahoo! We, we love, love surprise, surprise parties. parties. But touch em and take em were not so forgiving. They were very upset that their surprise party was ruined, and they told Party Pooper they would never invite him to another party, ever. Upon hearing this, Party Pooper tooted his horn and stomped off begrudgingly. After that, Party Pooper rarely received invitations to parties, especially surprise parties. Exaggerata felt bad for poor Party Pooper, so she made sure to spend extra time with him. The two of them always had a good time when they were out together. Exaggerata had a way of making Party Pooper laugh 
so hard <laughs> he couldn't catch his breath. Her exaggerations were just so over the top that they became entertaining. One warm summer day, when Party Pooper met up with Exaggerata, she walked up to him, fanning herself, and exclaimed, in a southern accent no less, Party Pooper, it's so hot today. I'm sure that I will melt into a puddle and someone like Dirty Gus will slip on me and then I will be hot and dirty and full of mud. Oh, Party Pooper, I don't think I can take it. Please fetch me some iced tea before I wither away into nothing. Party Pooper <laughs> burst out laughing and said, at your service. Then he ran inside and came out with a tall, cool glass of iced tea. Ah, so much better, exclaimed Exaggerata after she slurped down the tea. Let the party begin. No, no parties, said Party Pooper as he tooted his little horn. <coughs> Exaggerata looked at him and held up her hands. It was just a figure of speech. Don't let it throw you. Let me rephrase myself. Let the adventure begin, she said. Better, said Party Pooper. Where are we off to today? Asked Exaggerata. Not a party, said Party Pooper, as he stomped his foot and tooted his little horn. No, no, of course not. No parties. But please stop tooting that horn or my ears will fall off, said Exaggerata. Party Pooper wanted to stay mad, but he couldn't when Exaggerata said such funny things. We are going over to the Mads, Mad Adam and Madam. They have a swimming pool and that is what we need on this hot day, said Party Pooper. Oh, why, yes, that is exactly what we need in this heat. A swimming pool will save my life before I perish in this heat said Exaggerata. Party Pooper just laughed and led the way to the gate of the Mad's backyard. He hopped up and unlatched the gate and pushed it open. As soon as he did, the Mads popped out and said, Surprise! Party Pooper was so startled that he pulled out his little horn, closed his eyes, and just tooted and tooted as hard as he could. The Mads covered their ears and ran away along with Exaggerata. After tooting his horn, Party Pooper finally opened his eyes to find that he was no longer in Goop World. He was submerged in water. Chapter 2 Party Pooper sputtered to the top of a river and flailed around struggling against the current until he finally settled in and let it carry him for a bit. He wanted to relax and figure out what was happening. Being a very strong swimmer, Party Pooper started to enjoy his watery trip and he swam with the current as he surveyed the banks on either side of the river. There was captivating scenery in all directions. Villages with red roofed houses, green hills dotted with little shingled cottages, and forests that reached all the way down to the water's edge. This is magical, thought Party Pooper as he admired the scenery. After a sunny afternoon of floating down a splendid river, Party Pooper decided it was time to head to shore. He waited until he saw a little inlet in the river and then swam for it. Climbing ashore a grassy bank, Party Pooper looked all around trying to guess where he had landed. 
He had heard of other goops going on adventures to strange and foreign lands, but he had never experienced one himself. Not until this moment. And it was more exciting than he could have imagined. Everything seemed extra colorful and eye-popping. And there was a sense of adventure lingering in the air. Party Pooper, who had never been a fan of surprises, was in eager anticipation of what would come next. Looking up the hill, he saw tiny houses with large shingled roofs, red framed windows, and red doors that looked as if they belonged in a fairy tale. Party Pooper was immediately intrigued, so he headed up the hill and knocked on the red door of one of the cottages. He waited patiently, wondering who would answer. But no one did. So he went over to the next little cottage and tried again. He stepped up to the door and knocked and then took a few steps back to wait. No one answered this door either. Party Pooper was quite persistent, so he wasn't put off. He went over to another red door and knocked standing back once again to wait. Then he heard a strange knock, a knock that he hadn't made. He looked all around and didn't see anyone, and the door hadn't moved. The strange knock came again, and this time, Party Pooper happened to catch something moving on the roof out of the corner of his eye. He zoned in on the movement and watched in amazement as one of the oversized shingles lifted up and then clapped down on the roof and made the strange knocking sound. The sh shingles are, are knocking at me? Asked Party Pooper out loud. The shingle clapped up and down a few times making the knocking sound as if to say, Yes. You. Party Pooper held up his party horn and tooted it back at the shingle. Then, the strangest thing happened. The shingle began to clap up and down again. But this time, something was different. The clapping had a certain familiar rhythm to it, as if the shingles were communicating with Party Pooper. Party Pooper stood perfectly still and listened. He could feel his brain lighting up and circuits starting to fire. And then it came to him. The shingle was tapping out to Party Pooper in Morris code. Party Pooper had learned Morse code in Miss Wigglebutt's science class. It was based on a series of taps that represented letters that spelled words. When he learned Morse code, Party Pooper was sure he would never have any use for it. But he found it interesting, so he paid attention in class. Now, finally, was his chance to use Morse code. Party Pooper lifted up his little horn and began to toot in short beeps. He said, are you talking to me? In Morse code? The shingle immediately began to clap up and down, tapping away. Yes! Party Pooper tooted back with his horn. Oh, wow! That is amazing! Yes, it is! 
I'm glad you understand. Now, you must listen to me, clapped the shingle. I'm listening, tooted Party Pooper. Then the shingle began to clap so fast that Party Pooper thought he wouldn't be able to keep up. He listened closely, spelling out the words in his head. When the shingle was finally finished, he clapped. Do you understand? For a moment, Party Pooper was too stunned to do or say anything as he tried to digest everything that the shingle had just communicated. Then he tooted back at the shingle in Morse code and said, I think you just said that I'm in Serbia, in a small village along the Danube River. We're just downstream from the Golubak Fortress. I passed by the fortress as I floated down the river, and I picked up the spirits of a black knight and his horse. They're with me now, and I have to take them back to the fortress where they belong? The shingle clapped back. Yes. Chapter 3 Party Pooper was stunned. Firstly, he couldn't believe that he understood the Morse code so well. He thought surely he must have understood something. Secondly, he couldn't believe what he was hearing. He had picked up two spirits, one of a black knight and another of his horse from an old Serbian fortress, and now he had to return them? It all sounded so strange and ominous, but at the same time, exciting. As Party Pooper stood silent, not knowing what to do next, he looked around thinking that maybe he could catch a glimpse of the spirits. He didn't actually see anything, but he felt a little gust of wind come up and surround him and he heard the faintest horse whinny. He stared up at the shingle. The shingle began to clap again as Party Pooper listened closely. The shingle told Party Pooper that he was carrying a benevolent Polish knight called Zavisha the Black, who was known for his black hair and black suit of armor. He had fought in many battles and was highly regarded. The shingle went on to say that many spirits from battles past haunted the Golubak Fortress, but that Zawisha was the one who was the most respected and he was able to keep the rest of the spirits at peace in the fortress. Without him, there would be chaos and many of the spirits would turn to the evil spirit, Mamet, as a leader. Mamet wreaked havoc and ruin, and if he were left in charge, all visitors would be scared off, and eventually the beautiful fortress would be left in ruins. The shingle then clapped out, You can't let that happen. The fortress is the pride of Serbia. You must take Zavisha the Black and his horse back where they belong. Party Pooper wanted to put up his little horn and toot out that he wasn't responsible for this mess. He didn't want to go to the fortress and meet up with the terrible sounding Mamet. All he had done was float down the Danube River, but he stopped and thought for a moment. Here he was, a stranger, in a strange land, and even though it was accidental, he had caused a problem 
and it was his responsibility to fix it. Party Pooper tooted his little horn up at the shingle, saying, Okay, okay, I will take them back to the fortress, but you must tell me how. The shingle immediately clapped back, telling Party Pooper how proud he was of him for making the right decision. Then he said Party Pooper must call out to Zavisha and his horse and tell them he would guide them back to the fortress. They would have to walk upstream along the bank of the Danube until they came to the Grand Fortress. Once there, Party Pooper would have to enter through an underground tunnel at the river's edge and lead them inside. In the fortress, he would see 10 towers. Party Pooper had to locate the tallest tower and lead the spirits of Zavisha and his horse to the very top of the tallest tower. At the top of the tower, the spirits would be released back where they belonged and Party Pooper's mission would be complete. Party Pooper listened to all of this and took it in. He didn't have a problem with any of it. And in fact, he felt that when he was with Zavisha and his horse, he would be well looked after. He was happy to take on this adventure, but he was very hesitant about one part. How did he leave the fortress? He lifted his party horn and tooted out to the shingle, asking, how do I get out of the fortress? He looked up at the shingle and patiently waited. He saw the shingle flap up as if it was going to respond, and then it silently shut down. Something wasn't quite right, and Party Pooper could sense it. He tooted his horn again, asking the same question. How would he get back down from the fortress? He then looked at the shingle waiting. This time, the shingle slowly opened up and began to clap down in Morse code. Party Pooper listened carefully and his eyes grew large. He could feel his heart race. Then he said aloud, without bothering to tap. I have to sneak out of the fortress without alerting Mamet? He looked up at the shingle, who didn't respond. So Party Pooper blew out the question with his little horn. The response came back. Yes, you must avoid Mamet at all costs. Chapter 4 Party Pooper sat in silence for a moment, and then he felt a gust of wind surround him and heard the horse whinny from Zawisha's horse. The spirits were ready and waiting to return home to the fortress, and they knew Party Pooper would take them there. Before he started off on this adventure, Party Pooper turned to the shingle and asked, Any advice on avoiding Mamet? The shingle immediately clapped back one word, camouflage. I guess I can work with that, thought Party Pooper as he headed down towards the Danube River. At this point, he had become very comfortable with the idea of spirits keeping him company. So he decided to speak to them. Come on, Zoisha and horse, follow me. Oh, and if there's any way you can communicate with me, I would love to know the name of your horse, said Party Pooper. Just then, the wind picked up and whistled around him making a noise 
that sounded like Cone. Is your horse's name Cone? asked Party Pooper in astonishment. The wind gently surrounded him, as if to say, Yes. This is fantastic and exciting, said Party Pooper, who was beginning to enjoy his journey. He moved up the Danube, taking in the magnificent scenery, knowing he was accompanied by two very powerful spirits. There were thick forests lining the river and small animals, including squirrels, chipmunks, and beavers, who popped up along the way. Party Pooper was having a grand time, feeling like a bit of a knight himself as he moved along. After some time, he came around a bend in the river and saw an enormous bridge crossing the Danube. The bridge was large and sweeping, anchored by two stone pillars. The wind picked up again and guided Party Pooper in the direction of the bridge. He crossed it with the guidance of Zawisha and Cone surrounding him. The cool blue Danube moved silently beneath them and Party Pooper remembered how just a short time ago he had been floating down the river when he caught the spirits now with him. The spirits that needed to go back home where they belong, just like Party Pooper. After crossing the bridge, he continued upriver until he saw it in the distance. The brilliant, enormous Golubak Fortress sitting on the river's edge. Party Pooper looked at the fortress with the imposing 10 towers and immediately scanned for the tallest tower. Once he spotted it, he froze. Until that moment, he had completely forgotten about Mamet. Camouflage. I must learn how to camouflage, he said aloud. As if on cue, the wind picked up and swirled some water around his feet. Party Pooper looked down and saw the muddy banks of the Danube. The mud was an earthy brown color, a color that matched the stone of the fortress. Party Pooper had no doubt as to what he was supposed to do. He reached down, scooping up a handful of mud and began to slather it all over himself. Soon, he was covered head to toe in mud. I will blend right in now. That Mamet will never spot me, he exclaimed proudly. The wind gave a soft blow. Feeling empowered, Party Pooper walked around the fortress until he found the secret entry that the shingle had described. It was dark and watery, but there it was, a small stone entrance hidden behind a bush along the Danube. Party Pooper squeezed past the bush and into the entry, trusting that the spirits could easily follow him. The moment he entered the fortress, Party Pooper could feel a chaotic and stressful energy, and he knew something was awry. Mamet was surely in charge, wreaking havoc and fear. It was time for Zawisha to appear and create peace in the fortress. Party Pooper quickly moved through the underground passages as the shingle had described until he found the secret stairwell leading to the top of the highest tower. Up and up he went until he was almost to the top. And then he felt it so strongly, a sinister energy. Something wasn't right. 
Party Pooper immediately flattened himself against the wall and willed himself to go blank, to not breathe or think. A moment later, a transparent black cloud floated down the stairwell. It moved quickly until it came to the exact spot where Party Pooper was pressed against the wall. The cloud stopped and time stood still. All the noise disappeared. There was a tension as if the black cloud was searching for something, sensing something, and then finally it moved on. It was Mehmet, and the moment he disappeared, Party Pooper shot up the rest of the stairs faster than a rocket until he arrived at the top of the tower. Once there, he could feel the instant release of Zawisha and Cone. They were back where they belonged. Party Pooper had done it. He had succeeded in his mission, and now it was time for him to return home. Just as he began to head down the stairs, he felt the energy of Mamet headed straight for him, and he froze as he watched the black cloud enter the tower. Right when he thought he would be swallowed by the cloud, he watched as a gust of wind flew at it and scattered it into tiny black clouds that wafted back down the staircase. He knew it was Zawisha protecting him. Party Pooper heard the whinny of a horse and felt a gust of wind pick him up and carry him out the tower window and over the Danube. Past the forests he went and over the village with the tiny shingle cottages. He looked down and waved as the friendly shingle clapped back at him as if to say farewell. The wind carried him all the way home to Goop World where he was deposited on a very familiar roof. It was the roof of his good friend, Exaggerata. Oh, I must climb down and go find Exaggerata and tell her all about the spirits of the Golubak Fortress, thought Party Pooper. But Exaggerata was nowhere to be found. She was in the Aneti Massif in Chad, but that is a tale for another time. Hey there! It's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.